Okay, everybody. In this next video section, we are going to continue to build on our program uh, by adding an enemy and adding health. So adding an enemy to our game assumes that our player will have to stay away from that enemy or they might lose the game. If we give our player health, it will give them something to protect and keep track of so they know if they still have a chance to win. So we can keep track of our health in our code by making what's called a variable. And like the name implies, a variable can change over time. Our health might change depending on how we play the game. So the name makes sense. So the first thing we want to do is to make a variable. And if you look at the left side options here, one of them towards the bottom says variables. So click on variables at the bottom. The next thing you want to do is actually make a variable. So in the left side over here, click on make a variable. And when this window here pops up, you want to type the name of your variable in that window, which in our case is going to say health. And make sure that for all sprites is selected so that different sprites can also interact with it. And then click OK. At this point, you should notice that a health window showed up here on your preview screen. The next thing we want to do is make our enemy sprite. So we're going to set up an evil wizard to be our enemy. Like we did before with our donut, we're going to search in the sprites menu for wizard and then click on him to add him as a sprite. So in the bottom of your screen, choose a sprite. You can go to the search menu and start to type in wizard and you'll notice that shows up right here so click on the wizard this is what you should see now as I'm sure you can tell that our wizard is way too big and he's also in the wrong position so we're gonna fix him on the next page so let's shrink this wizard down by um, making sure first of all that the wizard is selected by highlighting in blue and then if you go here and look at the size of the wizard, you'll notice that it's 100 right now. We can change that number to make the wizard a little bit smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that 100 to a 35 and hit enter. And that should make the wizard much smaller. Another thing we want to do is actually change the direction that the wizard is facing so that he can face the cat. So if you go down when the wizard is selected to the direction window and you click in here, you'll notice that you are given this dial where you can um, change the rotation of the wizard and you can also change the direction that the wizard is. So what you're going to do is grab this little arrow and flip it around to the other side so that the wizard is facing the cat. So that should look like this now. And the last thing you want to do in this part is to grab the wizard and actually move him below your wall. So he's standing right about there. So it should look like this. So we want to make sure that our wizard does not show up on the title screen when we, when we originally start the game. So what we want to do is we want to hide the wizard when the green flag is clicked. So... Um, we want to make sure that you can't see them on the title screen. So you're going to go to the events tab and bring out when the green flag is clicked. And also again, make sure that your wizard sprite is selected. So we want to go to the looks options and find the one that says hide. And bring that out and snap it to when the green flag is clicked. So since we only want the wizard to hide when the game starts and the green flag is clicked, but we want him to show up once we go to the first level. So you're going to need to go to the events and bring out when I receive start game. So once again, under the looks tab, you're going to go until you find one that says show. So when, when I receive start game, you're going to show the wizard, because it's still selected, 
and then you're going to go to motion and go to XY and it should be in the location under the wall it should be around these coordinates negative 6 negative 112 and since we also want the wizard to be animated to look like it's moving we want to get the uh, forever loop out and make sure that he's changing his costume back and forth like we did for the cat so you're going to want to go to the control tab and bring out a forever loop looks just like this and you're going to snap it right below the go to xy so once you have your forever loop out there you're going to want to go to next costume which is located under looks and it says next costume so you want to place that right inside your forever loop and now you want to have that go to next costume every two seconds so if we go to the control tab and we select the weight and we snap that here and we change it from one second to two seconds that's what it should look like so that's going to be it for the wizard uh, up to this point uh, in the next section I'm going to be showing you how to code the cat to take damage and lose some health so until next time good luck